Hello, my name's Bont, Richard Bont, and this is Curmudgeonly Yours, a show on Society Bites Radio, part of the Radio Ear Network family, supplying social interaction for the mind and soul. The introductory and concluding music to this show is La Polonaise by Wieniawski, played by Max Bont. I am your host and curmudgeon, where everything is what it seems. Nothing is what it seems. And what is not said is often of most interest. Hello, uh, my guest today, Emma Criddle, is a Generation Z kid like any other, but an entrepreneur on the side. She started recording children's books for a charity project in 2016, and it has turned into a podcast with over 600 episodes in 2019. Now she has co-founded a publishing company, and she wants to teach kids the importance of reading, writing, and building their own brands. Boy, you sound like a real marketer, Emma Criddle. Welcome to Curmudgeonly Yours and Society Bites Radio. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Emma Criddle, could you tell me how you uh, got started in this business? Because you're still in school, aren't you? You're nine years old. I got started because I saw my dad being an entrepreneur and like I wanted to follow in his footsteps. Thank you. I'll tell him about how you started your podcast. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm, I'm also with Jason Criddle. Uh, that's Emma Criddle's dad. Go ahead there, uh, uh, Emma. Yeah, this is Jason. Yeah, this is Jason Criddle. I'm just, just guiding her along the way. I'm asking her to uh, talk to us about how she started her podcast, The Kids in Perfect. Tanzania. Why don't you talk about that? Go ahead. Well, it's, it was very sad, and it was, it was cute seeing, like, these kids getting presents for Christmas. And they were getting like clothes and water, and it was it was amazing seeing their smiles that they had this stuff. And I saw that, and I wanted to start reading. Like they don't they don't have access to books or libraries, so why don't we just read to them? Right. And where were these kids? In Tanzania. 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 Oh, Tanzania. In Tanzania. Oh. Yeah, they were in Tanzania and Africa, and, um, and and all they really wanted for Christmas was books, but to send books to Africa was e- extremely expensive. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so they did have 2G internet access. They couldn't watch videos, but they could listen to audio. And so Emma started recording audio, audio files, and we were sending audio files so these kids could listen to stories before they would go to sleep at night. Wow. And... Uh... I guess um, uh, the, in Tanzania, of course, the language is English, right? Yeah, yeah, they were uh, they were learning English. Um, a lot of them spoke English primarily, and then the, uh, the the people that ran up the organization, headed up the organization, they were perfect English speakers. So, yeah, uh, they were trying to teach the kids how to read and write. And they had little school programs, and they were they were building a hospital, and you know, I, I just. Mm-hmm. Uh, just trying to to give these kids that had been uh, abandoned and subject to drugs and molestations. I mean, this, these kids are just oh, boy. don't have any parents. It was it was they don't have any parents. It's just really sad. And so, uh, and so we were just trying to do something, trying to do something to help them out. And uh, and Emma found that you know reading them books uh, it didn't cost us anything. <laughs> sure. And uh, so it just took it just took practice, and it took practice, and and um, and then we eventually put them on a podcast, and it just kept going because she started getting real listeners and getting kids that that wanted to hear her books. Well, uh, let me get this straight. You guys went over to uh, Tanzania. Was it last year or something? And uh, and you saw you just went over there to to uh, what maybe safari or something, or just went over to look at the place and. And then you came across these these children. Uh, how did that all? And then how did you go from there to the the podcast? Oh, I I wish we had gone to Tanzania, man. No, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I do I do branding for companies, and so I have people reach out to me all the time uh, that are looking to either raise funds or build a website or an app, or they're just needing help with their business. Um, they probably read. Um, one of my articles that I had written on Forbes, or they could have read one of my books or something. Um, I don't okay. remember exactly why they reached out. And so they reached out for help. And we, I just remember we were in the middle of building them a website 
and um, and they were sending pictures. Uh, they were sending pictures and, and things to put in the gallery of this website. It was a donation website, and so that's that's how we started helping them. You know, it, it turned into it started out as a, a work project for me, um, but then we ended up kind of building a relationship, and we started learning about the kids and and. And so that's when Emma decided to start reading books and, and sending the audio files over. Okay. So uh, these kids, are, are they younger than you, Emma, or are they older or uh, or what? They're, it's for all ages. Uh, the ah. kids that you're reading. Yeah. Oh, they're they younger. 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 Yeah. And uh, yeah. what kind of books, what kind of books do they like? Any books. I'm sorry? I, uh, any books and I like reading fairy tales and I'm reading like this book called candy fairies about these fairies that make candy. Basically it's, it's really fun. <laughs> and, so yeah, go ahead. So they like the magic of, of these, uh, candy books. Yes. I've been reading them for like two months now. I really love these books. Okay, why do you like them? Uh, uh, what's so, so special about these books? And why do they like them? They like them because, like, books. It's books. They don't mm. have books. Right. I mean, the kind of story. Mm -hmm. So they're, uh, could you tell me a little bit? Could you maybe tell me a story or read or read one of the stories? Do you have one there with you? I have. I have yeah, she, yeah, she can uh, she can grab her candy fairy. Yeah, I think I think one of the yeah, I'm I'm 36 years old. Uh, I remember, you know, and and you got you sound you sound a little bit older than me. Yeah, I'm quite a bit when, older than you. <laughs> when I was growing up, books were still a big deal. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I would skip the school to go to the library. Um, really? And, you know, we grew up with shows like Sesame Street and Reading Rainbow. And okay. we grew up we grew up learning to respect police officers and firefighters. Sure. Um, we, you know, these are these are things that are not available to kids anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Whenever they turn on the TV now, um, it, the TV is full of of TV shows and cartoons that really are just teaching kids how to be disrespectful and sarcastic. Yeah. And, uh, and everything is, everything is based around jokes and entertainment rather than being based around education. Mm. And so, you know, I think one of the Emma, Emma has days that she works on her podcast and then she has days where she takes the day off. And even on the days that she's taking her days off, she's still involved in reading her books. Um, and I yeah. think that books allow us to escape into a story in a way that a movie cannot capture us. Whenever we are watching a film, when we're watching a story be played out in yeah. front of us, it's entertaining to watch, but we mm. are not inside it. And whenever we're reading a book for days or weeks at a time, it gives us a chance to become those characters. Yeah, um, not only not only that, you you sort of imagine what the uh, the characters look like, and uh, I mean, I remember seeing uh, this uh, film Papillon with uh, uh, by Henri uh, Charrier, whatever his name was, uh, and I saw Steve McQueen and Dustin Hoffman do it, and it was not at all like I had I had imagined it in my mind, and it was apparently a good film that they did. So. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's actually really funny, like, whenever you watch a film. And, um, and you know, whenever I watch movies, I, I guess movies have been ruined for me for a long time because I've, I've gotten to the point in my, in my career where I've, I've gotten to meet quite a few actors that have been on TV and in movies. Mm. And so, to me, whenever I watch anything on the TV, I don't see the TV anymore. I see the whole set. And so, whenever uh. I'm watching... TV or watching a movie, all that's in my head is, oh yeah, those are real people, and that's a job. You uh, know, <laughs> and it's, that's it's too bad. Really hard for me to, it's really you hard can't... for me to get into the movies anymore. You know, but books are, but with books, I can still pick up the book. I can still become a character. I can still dive in. You know, we we're just a reading family. And, right. Uh, well, 
Do you read on your phone or do you read on your phone or do you read uh, paperback? Or do, I guess uh, I mean, like, uh, it doesn't. Yeah, I, 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 read, uh, I read and write a lot on my phone, but we have a pretty extensive library in our house. We have a, you know, we have quite a few bookshelves that, that are full, uh, four or five huge bookshelves that are just full of books. And, you know, you know anytime Home Price Books has one of their sales or whenever the library has one of their book sales, we always try to go and, and stock up on a few new ones. But uh, uh, Emma, Emma has Candy Fairy sitting right here. She's going to read you guys a, oh, a, a couple of things if you want. Sounds good. Go ahead, Emma. So this is chapter one of the Candy Fairies book that I'm reading. It's called Mini Sweets. Mini and the print, this princess has, uh, she just has a newborn baby that's getting sick. So I'd like to read you a couple of pages from chapter one. Okay. Who is, who is Mini Sweet? Uh, or I guess I'll let you read that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Chapter one, Sweet Sun Dip. Fairy the Fruit Fairy flew across Sugar Valley. She has been in, sour, in the Sour Orchid picking fruit gems for her latest dress design. She hadn't, and she hadn't realized how late it had gotten. Sometimes, Fairy got caught up in her fashion designs and lost track of time. The sun was sliding quickly towards the, the top of the frosted mountain. Soon, it would be sun dip. And the time of the and time of day and the time of the day when Barry, soon it would be sun dip. The time of at the time of day when Barry and her candy fairy friends would to get and got together at Licorice Lake and watch the sun set. They liked to, and they liked to catch up on one another and eat sweet treats. And there, and there you are, Melly the Caramel Fairy exclaimed as Barry landed on the red look, on the red sugar sand at the lake. I was getting worried. Rain as a gummy fairy said. Barry smiled. I wouldn't miss Sun Dip and Melly's fresh caramels, she said. I want I and I want to see Princess Dash. A smile spread across her face. I'm still not used to saying that, she said, giggling. <laughs> Their friend Dash was in, the mint fairy had been crowned a, prin a peppermint princess when it was discovered from it was discovered she was a lot and she was from a line of minty royalty in peppermint kingdom. Dash's great great grandparents were king and queen and were king and queen of the frozen peppermint kingdom on ice cream aisles. Long ago, no long ago. When, the, when an evil ogre from, uh, threatened their, their palace and candy, the royal, the royal, the royals moved to Peppermint Grove and Sugar Valley for safety. Now Dash split her time between Candy Kingdom and the Ice Cream Isles. She tried, and she tried to get back for a few, for a few sun dips each month. Barry loved seeing the mint, her minty. And loved seeing her minty fairy friend and hearing all about life in fro in the frozen peppermint kingdom. Your the your listeners, the kids that you read to, they uh, they really get into it. They uh, they uh, they identify with the different characters. I suppose. How does that work? Well, they they like. Well, the kids. Well, what do you like about candy fairies? How about that? Yeah, it's a better like, question. I like that I'm a mix of all the characters, and I like how the characters explore in this land of candy and ice cream and brownies. And <laughs> it's fun because I like fashions. I love to do fashions, and Barry, the fruit fairy, loves fashions, and I just think I'm a 